願いします。Good evening, everyone. Good morning to some of you.、Uh, let me read the Shokshu first, if you, if you don't mind. This is number 17, Rei Sei Shin of Toi Sensei's Shokshu. We, as human beings, are given a mind that is directly connected to the universe. This is Rei Sei Shin. Water, when it settles, can clearly reflect the moon. When our mind becomes calm, Rei Sei Shin expresses itself clearly. And unmistakably, once this mind arises, in that moment, any selfish urges and desires disappear, and the universal mind of love and protection for all things shines forth. Let us polish our race as shin. Thank you.、Um, let's begin with some key breathing, please. Support yourself.
So uh, tonight um, is the first of the four uh, Shinichi Suzuki Sensei's four principles. Now he didn't call them four basic principles, he just called them four principles. Um, the four principles are so what, do nothing, be natural, and don't worry, be happy. And um, I might say that you'd have to know Shinichi Suzuki Sensei to really appreciate this coming in the front door. And maybe I can tell you a couple of things. Um, one of the, uh, I, I was uh, his student. Well, I'm still his student, but I, I was, uh, he was living and I was uh, following him, uh, usually as his otomo, for 35 years. Um, he was my teacher here in Hawaii, on Maui. He was born here, family of 10 children. And uh, was a, uh, a, he, he grew in the police department to be a, a very famous detective. He was a major of detectives. And, uh, and when, he, when he was ready to retire, they asked him to be chief of, <laughs> chief of police. And he, he which is a great honor here in the small community on Maui, you know. And um, he told me he dearly wanted to do that. But it was a choice between that and taking his pension and going to Japan and training with Toei Sensei. So of course he left and went to Japan, came with Toy Sensei. So he was there for a year and a half. And when I came to Maui, uh, and when I came to the dojo to investigate, to join in, he, he wasn't here, he was in Japan. So I didn't meet him for six months uh, after I started training. But we grew, uh, he told me one time that he, he knew when he met me. Uh, and uh, well, we became very close friends. Uh, he told me one time that I was the closest friend he'd ever had. And he certainly was the closest friend I'd ever had. But I never forgot that he was my teacher. And this is very important, you know, because you, you, you have a kind of relationship if, you're a re if you really have a, a true student-teacher mm, relationship, you have a kind of a bond, a kind of very unique and a really intimate, a personal, deeply personal bond, because you're exploring things together that you just don't explore with other people. Probably other people don't want to explore them with you either. But it's uh, the kind of... Uh, uh, exploration and uh, questioning and, 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 and looking into that you just don't do with anyone except your teacher and your student. And in the beginning, there's a, there's, a, there's, there's a huge gap between the teacher and the student. But as time goes on, that gap closes. Until, until it's no more. You know, uh, so Suzuki Sensei was um, a great lion heart. Uh, for those of you that knew him and trained with him, you know already that he was terrifying when you first met him, but he was also the most <laughs> fun guy to be around also. He was a great practical joker. He loved to, to, uh, to do things to us that, uh, like to, uh, today is April, I don't know, third or something, but Wednesday was April 1st. And uh, so he was always doing April Fool's kind of jokes, you know. And I, I'm telling you all this because I, it's, it's a prelude uh, to helping you understand what he means when he says, so what? Um, it's a kind of uh, warming us up to or helps us along the path to equanimity in our relationship with other people and, 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 uh, and circumstances. 
you know, uh, well, some of us are born with great advantages. I'm sure you realize that to be, uh, you know, to be uh, Caucasian and to be a male and large, all of which I am in this world today, is a bit of an advantage. And you should be grateful for it if you're like that, which many of you are. Um, but don't think of yourself as special or elitist or deserving of anything. That's why you should really take it seriously and be grateful for it. So you can say, so what? So what? And then you can begin to feel the, the same kind of aloha for everyone you meet, you know. Uh, not just the, the ones that treat you like you're really something special. So and I'm, 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 everyone gets older, you know? So also something to be grateful for. So what? Getting older. And I'm going to die sooner than some of you. So what? Well, this is the kind of uh, even-temperedness that Suzuki Sensei uh, exhibited uh, all the time, uh, all the time. And, 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 and so these things just came out of his, his um, uh, the, they were the result of years and years and years of his personal exploration into what it means to keep on point, what it means to experience and share with others mind-body unification, which of course he learned at the feet of his teacher, Kujitoi Sensei. Some people, when they hear this, um, this so what, um, maybe think it might be cynical. Uh, but please don't take it this way. This is not something you, you say, ah, I don't care. So what, I don't care. It's not like that. It's not an I don't care. Maybe I don't mind. It's okay, that's okay. Uh, but don't say I don't care. This is not what this is. So what is not minding that it's hot, not minding that it's cold, not minding that you're ill, not minding that you're getting old, not minding that that other person is more beautiful than you. So what? It's a little bit like saying, well, we'll see. You know, the story about the farmer and his wife and son lived on this farm and they had a horse and the horse uh, did all the work. It, it pulled the plow, it pulled the cart, it, it did everything for them. And uh, the son was a teenager and he did a lot of work also on the farm. You know, one night at the end of the day, he put the horse away and didn't properly lock the gate. Of course, the horse ran away during the night and the neighbor came over in the morning and said, oh my God, what are you gonna do now? You don't have a horse anymore, how can you farm? And the farmer said to him, we'll see. And the next day, the horse returned with another horse. It found a friend. So now he had two horses. And the neighbor came over and said, wow, you are so fortunate. Now you have two horses. And he said, well, we'll see. And the next day he asked his son to please go break the horse, to train the horse, to do the, pull the plow and pull the cart. And in the process of, of teaching the horse, he fell off and broke his leg. And the neighbor came over and said, you poor thing, you're not gonna be on the farm anymore. Your son can't even walk. And he said, we'll see. And, the next day, the army came through town and, and conscripted all the young men, except his son, because, of course, his son had a broken leg. 
So I, I could go on and on and on. <laughs> this kind of a story is filled with little C's. Or so what? Because we don't, so what also acknowledges that just like with this virus thing that's happening, we don't know. Of course, we're sensible and we follow the directions of the, the medical professionals. But, you know, of course, we want to know, when will we open the dojo again? And will all the students come back and train again <laughs> with us? And, and will we be able to train the way we've always been able to train? We don't know. So we can only say, so what? There's only this here, only this here for us. We're here together. And even this is, uh, we may feel very, uh, I feel very like uh, uh, fortunate to be in this position, to be with you folks. I hardly get to see many of you one month a year if I'm lucky. And some of you I don't hardly see at all. So to have you all in one place, Robbie Kessler is here from Australia. <laughs> Haven't seen him in ages. So many old friends, Ralph Putman, uh, Petman from uh, Japan. Many people that I uh, haven't seen in ages. So this is a very, uh, you know, I feel very fortunate and I feel very grateful. But on the other hand, we don't want to get caught up in it all. This is an opportunity for every single one of us to treat in the only way you know how. I can't tell you. And maybe, it, 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 I mean, I'm very grateful that you're here to listen uh, to, to my story about Suzuki Sensei and so what and so forth. But don't believe me, please, don't believe me. If, if anything strikes you as meaningful, then find out for yourself if it is or not. You have to sit, you have to do the work. It's not my job to do it, I can't. I could, I would if I could, but I can't. You have to do it. So, okay, so that's the deal that we have. And if we're both lucky in this lifetime, then we get to spend more and more time together in the role of teacher and student and dearest friends. Okay. Um, I don't know if I have more to say about so what tonight, right now. And so I'd like you to talk about it. Uh, you can ask a question or you can make a comment. Um, but please say something. I've been doing this for half an hour now, so it's your turn. And uh, just like usual, if I don't uh, hear anything from you, I'll call on you. There's Steve Self, yes. Good evening, Sensei. Can well, you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Okay, good. My question uh, is, uh, how, so what fits with Shinpen Shobu? <laughs> oh, it's perfect. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Shinpen Shobu. Shinpen Shobu means life and death. When I first met Suzuki Sensei, uh, the first day he came into the dojo, uh, he said, ah, hello, fellas, I'm here. And he grabbed a book Ken, and there were maybe 10 or 15 of us in the class and uh, stepped onto the mat in his uh, outfit and came over and chased us into the corner and held the book Ken. And, and I was the big guy and I was in the right in the corner. And I felt like he was holding this book Ken on me. And he said, you don't understand nothing. This training is Shinkin Shobu, life and death. And it wasn't long after that before he taught me, so what? Okay. 
Yeah, so, so yes, this, this life is life and death. Every moment is life and death. But if you live it as if you're terrified of death, of course, you won't actually live your life. But also, if you treat it like it doesn't matter, like a cynic would, like it has no power over you, like arrogant, then also, this is not so what. So what is, uh, you know, if you can understand this, I'm trying to point to here. So what to Suzuki Sensei is, a, is, is respecting life. Can you see? So um, we don't worship death, but we don't worship fear either. We don't, and we don't live to die, uh, but we don't have to think about dying all the time, you know, either. We don't have to be worried about it. So what means just be here now? There's so many things in this life that we can't do anything about, including dying. <laughs> and it's very poignant these days, isn't it? Because so many of us have lost our lives to this situation. And of course, it's always happening. <laughs> it will continue to happen with or without the situation. You know. But, you know, it's very important to, 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 to respect that and realize that we can die at any moment, not just from the coronavirus, but at any moment. This uh, the truck might come down the hill and pull, plow into my office and kill me right now in front of me. I don't know. Who knows what can happen, but something can happen. Some situation can arise. Maybe a heart attack, boom, die. We don't know. We don't know when that will happen. We have no control over these things. And yet, we spend so much time worrying, thinking, planning, cajoling, praying, wishing, clawing to find some measure of control to get the things we want from our life and avoid the pain that we don't want from our life. It's best just to say, so what, and then don't suffer. You can't do anything about the pain and you can't do anything about the pleasure coming and leaving. It just does in spite of us. But you don't have to suffer because of it. You don't have to react to that pain. That's what suffering is. Suffering is something we make ourselves do. We cause ourselves to suffer by reacting to pain. You have a lot of pain, so what? You have a lot of pleasure, so what? So that's bonding with it. That's not pushing it away. I, I want that to be really clear uh, because that's what he taught me about that. Okay, someone else? Yes. Hey, can you hear me? Bobby Kessler, Australia, yes. Good to talk to you again. <laughs> hey, uh, you, there's two things you can be sure of, isn't there? Like, it's life and death. You're all going to get born and we're all going to die. So what? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> okay, thank you for adding. Do you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you well. It's, this is amazing, this Zoom machine. It's, uh, I had to get do some getting used to this, you know. When I first started, I just thought, well, it would just be a few of us here from Maui. <laughs> Many people, and, and I'm, um, I'm, I'm really excited about that. What a, what a great tool. I would like to ask, uh, Olaf Schubert to say something. Olaf Schubert is the chief instructor um, 
a Radgau dojo in Frankfurt, Germany, and a dear friend of mine, and a great student, and a great teacher. So yeah, we, what? Oh, what? <laughs> Good morning, Sensei. Good morning, it's five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Um, what you talked about today uh, means a great deal to me. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you very much for, for the relationship that we have and for all the time that so far we were able to spend together. And um, the feeling. I, 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 could, I could see when you talked about uh, Suzuki Sensei and how you felt while talking. <laughs> I really felt with you. Uh, you know, I, it's, it's so resonated here. Um, yeah. And, and uh, in May, since we can't see each other uh, in person, um, it's a good opportunity to practice this. So what, I think, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that that we don't get together like we used to every year. Did you know and, when Suzuki said they died? Can I just say this? Because you brought up about the so you know he, he when he died, then of course his his family asked me to to speak right to give the what do you call eulogy, and um, I was I really wanted to do that because I felt so strongly about Suzuki Sensei. But uh, as I was going up to the lectern, I realized that there was no way I could do this. I was already you know, so choked up, I couldn't speak at all. And that's what happens to me is I, I, I lose the ability to speak. <laughs> what if I get, if the feelings are too strong. Anyway, and, I, and as I was on my way up to the lecterns, I remembered that Suzuki Sensei told me one time, if you're having to give a talk and you get emotional, just yell at them. Yell at them loudly and it, it'll, it, it, you'll get through it. So I, I went up, I had, a, I had a 10 or 15 minute talk and I screamed all the way through the top of my voice. <laughs> I'm sure they wondered why I was yelling so much, but it got me through it. I was able to do it. Please, please excuse me for. No, it's uh, that's what we're here for. <laughs> like you used to say, and before uh, test preparations, when lots of energy come up, and and some some students uh, express concern or. Oh, I can't perform because of all that. And, and I think you told uh, Sophia when, when she uh, prepared for her knee down. Uh, okay, it's just, just notice it's energy coming up and, and use it. You, did, you didn't say so what, but you could have said so what as well. So uh, you need that energy. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm wondering if, if, if anybody has a conundrum about this. I'm looking at all the people. Yes, Alexei. You, you always have a conundrum. Hello, Sasei. Oh. Nice to see you, to hear you. Yeah, I'm very grateful for, for that opportunity. From Moscow uh, Key Society, Alexei Kiryukin. Exactly, yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, could you tell uh, a little bit more about uh, this, not difference, but uh, two sides of uh, these things don't care and don't mind? Because I a little bit feel this. Uh, uh, after your word about respect of the, I don't know, event, but still don't care. It's just like, uh, yeah, uh, I'm not worried. I'm not think too much, but don't mind. For me, it's quite close uh, or similar, but 
I feel this uh, still difference exists. Could you tell it a little bit more about this? Yes. So, uh, yeah. so in in English, when we say uh, when we say I don't care. That means we don't have a heartfelt care about it. We don't feel like that's important to us. I don't care. That doesn't affect me, so I'm not gonna pay any attention to it. Like a person that's suffering, and you don't care because you don't know them, let's say. I don't care because I don't know them. So we don't want to say something like this. We want to care about everyone and everything. We want to pay attention because paying attention is the key to development. It's the key to awakening. It, 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 our capacity to attention, it, to pay attention is our capacity to be present in any situation. So caring is very, very important. You pay attention to what you care about, um, but not minding means you won't worry about it. And not minding is like, so what? He's suffering, yes, and I do care, so I'll take care of him. But I don't mind, I'm not gonna pretend that I'm gonna heal him. I'm not gonna pretend that I'm the source of his uh, uh, sa salvation. I'm not gonna pretend that I'm more than anything else in this situation. I'm not going to mind about it. I'm not going to worry about it. When it's in front of me, I'll serve it. When it's not, I don't worry about it. I think this to me is not minding, um, which is, it feels, in, at least in the English language, it, it, in, and correct me, anybody, if, if you don't feel this way, but me, it feels extremely different like opposites. Uh, thank you, Sensei, and uh, I just think that there is a, <laughs> uh, how to say, uh, teeny thing or like a knife, yeah, you can <laughs> switch between this don't care and don't mind, but I, I think I, I got what you, what you say. Thank you. Okay, somebody else. Still have a little time, so please feel free. Don't oh, Sensei, I have a question. Sterling from from Maui. I think everybody knows Finch. Uh, you know, uh, Suzuki Sensei used to use this phrase a lot on the mat when we were moving, and uh, as an instruction to improve our mind and body coordination and our movement and you're using it specifically to address sometimes relationships so it seems the two are somehow are interconnected of course but can you speak to what when when you actually realize this so what and apply it what does it change and what is left after that change yeah, that's a good question. So, so the way I see this is, is what I was talking about the other night, is the difference between shugyo practice and keiko practice. Um, you know, I said as an example, someone pulls a knife on you. Uh, they hold a knife here to you. They're doing that to control you. They're doing that to intimidate you. They're doing that to frighten you and to, to, to get you to see them as the center of authority and yourself as a victim uh, of this authority, as a subservient to this authority. That's what that weapon means. And people have all kinds of weapons that are not necessarily sharp knives physically, but are very dangerous in the way that they use these weapons. They might be intellectual, they might be emotional, they might be physical, it's true, but that's not usually how it works. But, but the relationship I'm going to talk about is always the same. 
And this is where it, and Suzuki Sensei would talk about, so what, when we're training? Because you cannot osairu your partner, you, you cannot uh, become one with your partner if you're worried about them controlling you. You keep one point. This one point is the center of the universe. So, so I am the center of my universe. And no one has the ability, no one has the ability to, to make me a victim. Only I have the ability to make myself a victim. So that's when shugyo training means your the shugyo state of mind or taiga means always you are the center of the universe. Always you know this. So uh, Toei Sensei used to give uh, lectures and, and always he would come out, he loved to come out <laughs> with his microphone and you know he'd always stand sort of sideways with one foot out and he would look at the audience and go, I am the center of the universe. And of course, in the West, you know, everybody was like, what? Who does this guy think he is? And that's why he did that, to get people to, to, to and then of course, then he would give a great talk about it. And, and by the time it was through, then they understood to, to some degree or other. So this is, Suzuki Sensei would often, as you say, repeat, you know, the way you look at this person has to be so what? So what? And that doesn't mean that you diss him, dis dismiss him or her. It doesn't mean you don't respect them. It doesn't mean, so what doesn't mean that I don't care. It means I just don't mind. Okay? This is very important. Very important. Is that clear, do you think? Yes, thank you, Sensei. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, somebody else, please. Yes, Ralph. Hi. Wait, 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 wait. You have to unmute your screen. I can't hear you. Push your mute button. You should be unmuted. I have unmuted you. So you have to unmute yourself. I can't hear anything you're saying. You're very handsome, but I can't hear you. It's on the far left, the last thing over on the left at the bottom of your screen. Does everybody have that? Am I, am I correctly instructing him? Yeah, everybody has that. The far on the left, it says mute. There's a little microphone. Hit it, hit that. Excuse me, Sensei, he can also press his space bar. Press the space bar and hold it down. Okay, there's one other thing, Ralph. You have to go to settings and go to sound and check that you're not muted. You, your, your computer must be muted. Go to settings and go to sound and unmute. I want to hear what you have to say. Ralph Petman is a, an author of a number of spiritual books and he's a professor in Japan at the university. And yet he can't unmute his computer. <laughs> Did you go to settings? Okay, I think he's about to give up. Okay, someone else. We'll get back to you if you can figure it out. Um, he, uh, he might have not joined with his computer audio <clears throat> at the beginning of the meeting. Maybe. Um, anyway, Curtis Sensei, I, I was talking with um, <clears throat> a teenager the other day about what relax everything might mean. And 
And so what he said was that he said, you know, I don't feel, I'm not really impacted by coronavirus. Nobody in my family is sick, nobody I know, but uh, I guess I'm just sort of doing whatever comes up in my real life, like in my day-to-day -day life, things that happen, I have to respond to. I still have to, you know, do my chores and help my mom and do my schoolwork as if I'm going to go back to school. And maybe that's kind of like, I'm relaxed because I'm not really, uh, there's nothing for me to really do about this. I don't have anything I can fix. Right? So I'm just sort of wait and see. Um, who is this speaking, please? Uh, Sky. Oh, Sky, I saw you. Wait, let me, no, I just want to locate you, Sky. Oh, there's so. Oh, Sky, I see you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Is there a question there? Uh, I wanted to know how, so what, I'm not sure if that one is supposed to go with relax everything or if that goes with a different of Tohei Sensei's principles, but it seems to fit to me to say that sometimes we're just not really doing anything, but we're at the ready, you know? Uh, well, uh, since you bring that up, I will, I will say that uh, Suzuki Sensei did tell me one day he only said this once to me, so uh, you can take it as that. But he said, so, so what? He said, my four principles match the Toy totally Sensei's four principles. So what is keep one point? Do nothing is relax completely. Uh, 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 be natural is keep weight on your side. And don't worry, be happy is extend key. <laughs> so that was. He said that to me. I don't think I heard him say it more than once. Maybe like other people that knew him heard, heard, heard it more than once. Um, but um, um, so, so basically, you know, the four, so Toy Sense, it's four basic principles are just four ways of looking at the same thing. They're actually all the same thing. They're, they're different ways of looking at the same thing. Uh, he he might have said early on that there are different ways of approaching mind-body unification or or working out, getting to mind-body unification. But later in his life, he didn't say that anymore. He said they're the same. And, and, and so I think that in some sense, Suzuki Sensei's four principles are also the same thing. I was saving to the last one to say that, but basically the, 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 the experience is, is what I mean, is the same. The experience of so what, and do nothing, and be natural, and don't worry, be happy, is the same. And that experience is mind-body unification. That is, it is, it is reisei shin. I read, that's why I read that to begin with and before class or at the beginning of the class. Uh, it is, it is Reisei Shin. It is that state of being where there isn't any yearning or any need or any disappointment or dissatisfaction. Those things are all products of the small mind, the, the shoga mind. Those are all disappointments and, uh, you know, aggressive ambition and so forth. That's all part of Keiko training. It's all about self-development. It's all making more of yourself and becoming something great. There's nothing wrong with that, but don't get tied up in it. That's what so, so what takes you directly to, to shugyo practice takes you directly to the higher level where mind, body, mind and body is unified. Mind and body unified means self and other is unified. 
There is no, no more other. There's no separation. You know, don't you find it interesting that during this time of what what do they call it? A social separation or social distancing? I feel closer to people than ever before. Well, I don't get to see a whole lot of people, but I get to see you three times a week, if I'm lucky, uh, you come. And and I do feel this way in a way that I haven't ever quite before. And with my if she doesn't mind I say so, with my wife, uh, Lynn Curtis, when we're, we were together like all the time. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're isolated in our house. Our children can't come see us, our, our grandchildren. But once in a while they'll come and ride their bikes around the yard so we can stand and watch them, but we don't get to interact with them. We are with each other all the time. And I'm finding it really a wonderful experience something to be really grateful for. So if somebody complains to me about being socially distant, I say, so what? So, so what in this sense also means finding the way to your heart, to appreciating what, what, what's happening in our life. How are you doing, Ralph? Did you find it? Okay. Yeah, you're just gonna, okay. Well, so, um, uh, any, anyone else? Did, did that answer your question, Sky? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. There are so many of you Really, you have no thoughts, no concerns, no, it's perfectly clear. I've done an absolutely perfect job of, of presenting this, so you have no questions. I see Toby is over here writing things down. That's good. Hi, Sensei. Hi, Carlos. Como esta? Uh, muy bien, gracias. Um, so, uh, just going back to your your um, eulogy that you gave at uh, Suzuki Sensei's. You know, so emotion. Mm -hmm. So what, in my understanding, isn't saying don't be emotional yeah. and even don't express emotion. It's not saying that. No. Is that absolutely? elaborate on that I mean it's, it is something that I struggle with because I get emotional just like uh, everyone else and and well maybe there might be some disappointment in myself about being that way at, at a certain time. Uh, I'm not, not in general, but at times there may be, you know, you get frustrated, get angry. Yeah, I mean, there are times when I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, well, you know, because you're with me a lot, traveling, when we're teaching a seminar, I often get emotional and it can be frustrating for me because I really want to express what I'm feeling. It's not that I don't want to have the feeling. I want to express it. But in my case, maybe partly because of my, my I have such bad vocal cords, but somehow I, I, I can't speak. It, and, and that's frustrating a little bit. <laughs> but then, you know, I just wait. And everybody's very polite to me about it. Nobody complains that I, that I'm all choked up and can't speak. Like Olaf was very kind and said, no, no, that's all right, <laughs> it's fine. So I, I think uh, it's never something to be uh, unhappy about or, yeah, so what? You know, grief is really important and it's mixed up real tightly with uh, appreciation and uh, gratitude to me you know when i 
when I miss Suzuki Sensei, it's because I I cared so much about him. Uh, well, because I'm so grateful, you know, that, that that I got to hang out with him for 35 years. How did that happen? I mean, I didn't I didn't do anything to deserve it that I could see. And yet he was willing from the day he met me. He took me under his wing. And he told me way, way, way before he ever stopped teaching that I was to be his autotori, his, uh, that means the one who comes after. And he said, I will teach you accordingly. And so then he was very strict with me and much more so than with other people, which sometimes was difficult for me. But, you know, he loved me and he taught me how to be a teacher. That's he told me over and over again, this is what a teacher does. You have to learn to be a teacher. And the message is always the same. You have to hold everyone in your heart. You have to hold everyone. You cannot leave anyone out. Everyone gets held. Even when you're sleeping at night, you hold them, he told me. We were at a seminar and uh, we were actually in Brazil at, at, a, at a hotel. We were in a hotel room and we were sleeping. We were lying down and he said, don't forget, even when you're sleeping, you have to hold the group. Don't forget. And then he said it to me, of course, after that many, many, many times, have you learned this? So let me tell you, one time I returned from teaching in Europe and he was not teaching anymore. So I came back to the dojo and I, I walked in and I felt Kiai was down quite noticeably. So I went over to see him and I said, uh, Sensei, the Kiai in the dojo is lousy. What? what? And he said, well, oh, so what? You complaining to me? That's your job. I said, no, no, since I was in Europe for a month. And he said, so what? It has nothing to do with where your body is. I told you, you have to hold them. Were you holding the people on Maui or are you only holding your friends over there in Europe? He said, well, I was holding my friends in Europe. Yeah, so not enough. Too small, Chichimaru. You too small. So this kind of uh talking he did to me all the time and uh so i learned to appreciate it and that's why i wanted to spend four weeks four fridays <laughs> sharing these four principles with you so uh, our time is up but so next friday we'll have a class sunday morning of course i'll send you the thing tomorrow uh, by the way after tomorrow so you'll know the code for sunday for wednesday and friday because you have that already, right? And the Sunday one will be reoccurring. So there'll be three different codes you have to use because I'm not advanced enough yet that I know how to do one code for all three classes. I'm sure Olaf could do it. He's looking at me like, oh, I know how to do that. Uh, but I don't know how. So that's what we got. So I'll give you the code tomorrow and then, and then for Sunday morning uh, meditation class. And then Wednesday we'll have class, and then Friday I'll go to the second of these four principles of Shinichi Suzuki Sensei. Okay? Thank you. So nice to see you. Domo arigato gozaimashita.